Welcome back, it's me Lou. I'm here for another action figure unboxing and review. And today, <laughs> we're looking at something very different. We are looking at the Transformers Beast Wars toy of Hyrad. Hi Heinrad or Hein Lad, uh, depending on how you translate it. Um, so this is the actual imported Japanese Takara toy um, from the long gone Transformers Beast Wars line. It's a very unique character. Um, to be honest, I don't know much about this guy's back history. Um, I'm not the expert when it comes to Transformers Beast Wars lore. Um, I watched a cartoon, Beast Wars, you know, back when it first aired, and I was in college at the time. I grew up on the G1 stuff because that came out in the 80s when I was probably like 8 or 9 years old. But this guy, um, Heinrad, I'm unfamiliar with. I'm not sure if it's a character that was, uh, st you know, strictly for the Japanese audience. Because I don't recall ever seeing him in the American show. Um... So yeah, we're going to talk about this guy. <laughs> I've, I've had this, this specific figure in my collection for a very long time. Maybe close to 10 years now. Um, I bought this um, from a friend. My friend my, I, have, I have a buddy. He, he owns a toy shop. And I bought this. And to be honest, I've never opened this actual figure here before. I've always just kept it mint on card. Because for the longest time, I always thought that this was a sealed box and no no one ever opened it and I always thought it was a mint figure. And then the other day I was looking at the tape and I realized the tape was broken on one side. So I'm guessing this might have been opened. So at that point I was kind of like, oh the seal's broken, may as well just review it. So I'm not sure if this is going to be a full review either because it's a much older figure. Um, I, I, don't, I could be going, this figure could be going on like, you know, well over 20 years old. So I'm not sure if I'm going to actually transform it. Because I don't know how brittle or how sturdy the plastic is. And for all I know, this might be broken already. That's why it was <laughs> it's in the box um, and the tape is sealed. Yeah, so for now, um, yeah, we're going to take a look at this. But to begin the story, we're going to talk about how I got to know um, Heinrad or Heinlad, depending on how you pronounce it. So at my buddy's toy shop, um, he sells a lot of like loose figures. And I came across, he had this in stock. All right, so if you live in the Chicagoland area, the store I bought this initially from was um, Quake West. Quake Collectibles West. And that's not to be confused, um, that's not to be confused with Quake Collectibles that's located in the actual city of Chicago. Uh, Quake West um, was, lo is lo was located, or is, depending on how you view it, in the suburbs of Schaumburg. Um, the initial location, I think it was off of Beasterfield Road. And since then, the, the store has moved. It's merged with uh, Wax Packs Collectibles. Uh, so my buddy, he, he owned Quake, or he owns Quake, and um, sells lots of loose figures. And I was, for, for a couple of years, for many years actually, I was really into Transformers. Still a little bit, not as much as I used to be. And I was go going through his um, loose toys, and I came across this. <laughs> when I saw this, I immediately fell in love with it. I, don't, I didn't know what it was. It, it looked ridiculous. You know, it's it's a it's a raccoon, and then he has the yin and yang symbol in his belly, and um, it was it, I could tell immediately that it was missing a lot of accessories. It didn't have any hands. I had to like cobble hands together for him. But yeah, when I saw this at my buddy's store, I'm like, oh my god, I don't know what this is. I'm in love with it. I need to bring it home. <laughs> so I bought it from from him. And I think I might have paid under 10 bucks for it. You know, even though it was loose and is missing stuff, it seems such like a novel, weird character that I'm like, I gotta have this. So I brought this home. And like I said, I, it was missing hands. And then I had to do some research online. Um, didn't really know what this was. And, um, and I kind of came, I, I, part of me knew it was a transformer, but I, I wasn't hundred percent sure. I thought it might've been some weird, like this toy. So after doing some research, I kind of came to realize that this figure was also a knockoff, that it's not actually an official figure. It was a, it was a knockoff of like a real transformer beast wars figure. Um, uh, one of my friends on my Facebook list, 
um, actually pointed me in the right direction to find out more about this guy. And um, I did my homework and yeah, I found out this guy was Heinrad or Heinlad. He's a Japanese Beast Wars figure and uh, it's, it's, he's just really bizarre looking. So since this is the, the first version of the toy I got, I don't know essentially how to really transform this. So I'm just, cause I don't have the instructions. So um, I'm assuming that maybe he split his chest open. I don't know how this really works. I think his head might split open, but, or maybe, oh, okay. So yeah, this splits open and there's his robot head. Um, now the one thing with Beast Wars figures is that I loved Beast Wars, but the toys were always kind of hit or miss with me. Like sometimes the transformations would be very lazy, like Optimus Prime or Optimus Primal. Um, like his gorilla mode and his robot mode, they almost looked identical sometimes. It seems like all you're doing is just flipping something his chest down and revealing a head. It always bothered me that his like gorilla arms and his robot arms are like the same, um, you know, with slight transformation differences. Uh, but some of the tra some of the Beast Wars stuff is like I said, see, it's hit or miss with me. You know, some of the, the designs, some of the robot designs are really cool, but then the animal design might suffer, or sometimes the animal design is really cool, but then the the robot design might suffer. And I'm trying to get this guy transformed. It's like I said, this is an old toy. You know, you're looking at something that's probably close to like over 20 years old. And this is a knockoff, so it's not going to have the same. Um, quality as an, a real Takara action figure. This is not working out for me. So I'm trying to get his foot out and it's like stuck. Um, uh, maybe the tweezers will help. Yeah, there we go. I'm amazed that they made a, a knockoff of this guy. Because I know they make knockoffs of Transformers all the time in Asia, but this guy in particular. Alright. So this is the robot mode of Heinrad or Heinlad, however you want to say it. And he's missing a lot of accessories. He's missing his weapons. Um, but essentially you get the you get the gist of it. This is his robot form. It's really wild looking. <laughs> it's, I don't know. I get a kick out of it. I like his his his, his raccoon form more than his um, robot form. Uh, the articulation on him is really it's kind of limited. Um, his arms rotate, and then they could bend up. He has art articulation at the elbows, and as I stated earlier, these are not his real hands. I had to like cobble these hands together from pieces from the old Transformers Constructabot line, if you remember that. Uh, he has waist swivel, his legs move, knee moves, ankle moves. Yeah, so he's pretty articulated for what he is, but he's so top heavy that I don't think he'd stand very well when he tried to pose him. And his tail just constantly flops down. It doesn't really hold in place. So yeah, here's Heinrad or Heinlad in his robot form. <laughs> it's it's a weird figure. Um, so here's the actual real toy. So maybe like a year or two later, uh, my buddy, he actually got the real toy in the shop. And as soon as I saw it, I fell in love with it. I'm like, I, got, I have the knockoff. I need to have the real one. So then I bought the real one. But I was, I was such an idiot because I thought it was sealed. I didn't examine it closely enough. So it, it has been played with, I'm guessing. But it looks like it has all the accessories. And I'm guessing whoever had this previously was a serious Transformer collector. Because for one, it's an imported toy. Two, it's, it was an imported toy during a time when um, it's hard to get imported Transformers. It's not like today where you know you have Big Bad Toy Store, The Chosen Prime you know, ages three and up, you have all these different online retailers who could get imported Transformers. Back when Beast Wars was around, there weren't too many places you could get imported Transformer toys. So whoever had this had to have been a serious collector. So I'm guessing, you know, this is probably hopefully in decent shape. At least the box was. I want to say, I think I paid a premium for this. I might have paid anywhere between 40 to $60, which sounds like a lot, 
but I was just checking eBay, and I think this guy is currently going for like maybe 180 uh, with some sellers, I think. Um, so uh, the, examining it, the package design of like Japanese Transformer toys, um, it's wild. <laughs> it's it's really wild. Uh, there's a Japanese mall near my house, and they had a Japanese toy store that used to carry um, Japanese Transformer toys. And it always amazed me like how different their package design is compared to us. Like, like Japanese graphic design sense and aesthetics is a lot different than you know um, out here. So, the Japanese toy boxes look so crazy, colorful, wild, and loud compared to their like Western counterparts. So, I mean, look at this. It's like there's so much going on. <laughs> there's so many logos. It's like you have Beast Wars written in English here, but then you have Japanese text running down here. And then he, this guy's a good guy because he's, he's with the Cybertron faction and he has the Maximal um, symbol up here. And then here's his robot mode. It's like the CG uh, computer model. And then uh, I believe this is figure S3 in the series. Yeah, yeah, this is old. This is from like 1999. So this is an old action figure. And on the back, um, or on the side, you have him in his raccoon mode. And then you have um, in his robot mode. And it's cool because there's like a small circular window up here, which is neat. And then he has um, some photos here. There's like a portrait of him. And you see he has a visor that closes down and a helmet. He has this crazy like watch or clock built into his chest and he could combine his accessories to make this weapon and here's the back so you have um, his raccoon mode and they kind of show that um, his robot mode and I want to say I read somewhere online that I think his watch is actually a functioning real alarm clock so I uh, I don't know it's nuts and on the on the bottom of the box is neat because you kind of have a checklist of all the different figures in the line and some of these I think are Japanese exclusive exclusive figures I don't think some of these figures came out in the US all right so let's open this guy up um, but before we do that um, I found a brief description of this character on the website toplessrobot.com so they compiled a list of like I think it was like 10 of the strangest Transformers. And this guy was at the top of the list. So from what I'm reading, they kind of describe him as almost kind of being like the Doc Brown of the Maximals. He, uh, he contains a working alarm clock in his stomach that in the fiction, um, it allows him to briefly stop time and phase between different points in time. So yeah, this guy has a superpower. He can like control time, which is neat. Um, the article also describes that um, he has a pair of goggles, which we saw here, you know, that the visor cl closes down. He's based off of the Japanese raccoon dog known as a tanuki. Um, this dude, he comes with a purse, which we see right there. And he also comes with a, a bottle of sake right there. So he likes to drink, he likes to party and shop, okay. And you can combine both those together to make the blaster, like I pointed out over here. Um, it also describes this um, Japanese raccoon as... It's, be, it's also known for having um, large testicles. <laughs> okay, so apparently this guy has large testicles. Yeah, so let's take a look at this, dude. Um, so yeah, the tape was sliced here. I don't know how I missed that when I bought this. I think I might have just been so, like in love and just googling at the window that I didn't really examine the box too thoroughly. Alright, so this is the first time I'm actually opening this up. Um, just because I always thought it was sealed. So... Uh, Okay, so first impressions of the toy while it's in the tray. <laughs> it's wild. It's such a wild looking guy. Um, it looks like everything's here. It looks to be complete. Alright, so yeah, I'm thinking whoever previously owned this was probably a serious Transformer collector. Because, you know, they went through great lengths just to 
hold on to the package and make sure everything was intact and still displayed nicely. Um, yeah, they didn't even remove the tape on one side here. They kind of left it so that they could actually just access it. Now, like I said, I'm not going to transform this because I don't know how how brittle the plastic is or the joints. Because over time, you know, stuff like that could like wear down, even if it's not handled. So yeah, here is Heinrad or Heinlad. So supposedly, I think this is a real working watch. I think it's nice. The sculpting's great. You know, the fur details awesome. I can't get enough of this <laughs> crazy watch in his belly. You know, it's it's so wild to think that you know you know come up with an. Can you imagine being like in a in a meeting or like. Um, you know, listen to your boss and you work on the Transformers property and you're like, you know, come up with a new character for Beast Wars. And you're like, okay, I'll come up with this crazy raccoon. You know, he has a, he has a watch in his belly. He has giant testicles. You know, you can see his scrotum right here. <laughs> and he can stop time and all sorts of wild stuff. And he likes to drink, so we'll give him a jar of sake. And he likes to shop, so we'll give him a purse. <laughs> so yeah, this is weird. Man, this is uh, yeah, this is probably one of my favorite Transformer toys in my collection. This is like the kind of toy that I want to be buried with. <laughs> or if at some point in time I have I like spawn children, you know, this will become like the family heirloom that, you know, my children will fight over. Like, no, dad promised me the crazy raccoon. So there's that. Um, I think there were. Oh yeah, here's the instruction sheet. So this is a look at like you know Japanese um, transformers and their instruction sheets. So if you've never had an imported transformer toy before, this is kind of like what you're missing out on. Um, so we got a nice trading card here of Heinrad, and all his stats are left in question marks. So. Don't know why. Oh, over here, I think this might be a catalog. Okay. So there's a Stegosaurus Transformer. Uh, uh, Triceratops. Yeah, I don't remember some of these coming out in the US. These might be, these might have been Japanese exclusives. Now, if you're an expert on Beast Wars, you know, feel free to leave comments below to like let me know what some of the stuff is. All right, this is pretty cool. So there's like a, a jackrabbit. There's a penguin. There's a wild boar. I don't know. This looks like it might be a crab. A pterodactyl. Um, we have the Optimus Primal, but this is the one where he's like a mammoth. Uh, here's a version of Megatron, I believe. I, I, I like the, the, the Woolly Mammoth Optimus Primal. You know, this is a figure that's very popular. And they've made this iteration of this character across different lines. Yeah, this is cool. No, I think this opens up in further. Okay, let me see if I can unfold this without ripping it. Oh, don't rip it. All right, I don't know how to open this, <laughs> to, to be honest. I think it wants to unfold like m more than once, but there's something on the inside. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna rip this. Um, gotta be gentle. Oh, right. This is huge. Okay, so there's more on here. There's like a horse. I don't know what that is. A bird. There's like a... There's that weird looking like swordfish prehistoric um, shark looking thing. I think an ankylosaurus. I believe that's what that's called. A bear. And then there's a checklist of all the different toys in the line. And there's also an ad for I think a VHS tape and video games. And also the the blind candy toys right here. All 
right. Uh, so here's the instructions. Um, I don't know what this is. Maybe it's like a subscription form or something. Um, so this is instructions on how to transform Heinrad into the from going from his alt mode, the raccoon, to the robot. All right, so it's only one sided. I hate black and white transformer instructions. I want to say when I was younger, I think the original G1 instructions were fully colored, I think. Unless my memory's this weird. But I always have a hard time trying to just decipher black and white transformer instructions. They never... Sometimes I, I can't tell if they're telling me to twist something or to pull something out. It gets all very confusing for me. But I think that's part of the appeal for transformers for a lot of people. It's almost like a Rubik's Cube. It's like a puzzle, you know. Sometimes people like... Just grabbing a transformer figure blindly and trying to figure out the transfer transformation, which I, you know, I, I'll do that too. But every now and then, I get worried that I might accidentally break something. So yeah, here's the bag of instructions and on all the other documentation that comes with this action figure. Okay, so if I had to rate this figure numerically on a scale of one to ten, um, I can't, you know give it a fair score just because I didn't fully unbox it and transform it. Uh, but that's like I said, this is an older toy. I don't want to risk damaging anything. Um, you know, for what it is, it's a, it's a comically hilarious character. It looks really neat. You know, his bio description sounds fun. You know, a, a, a Japanese raccoon dog that could control time. That sounds amazing. And the fact that he has giant testicles makes him even cooler. Um, yeah, I love this toy. It's awesome. It's definitely one of the highlights in my Transformer collection. Yeah, I'd easily get, give him a 8 to a 10. You know, 10 just to be funny. But it's cool. Uh, so do you need this? Oh, uh, maybe. You know, if you're a Transformer Beast Wars fan, um, and if you dabble in collecting some of the imported stuff, I think it's worth a purchase. But, you know, just find a reasonable price for it. You know, if... Like I said, I saw some eBay sellers selling this for a lot. I'm not sure if it's, you know, technically worth that much, but you know, I think it's a it's a fun toy to have and it, it'll brighten any collection. So let's wrap this video up. Um, once again, my name is Lou. Uh, thank you so much for checking out this different kind of review. Um, if you're new to my channel, welcome. If you are a returning subscriber or viewer, thank you so much for your likes, comments, and support. I greatly appreciate it. So, until the next video, be safe, take care, buy lots of toys, and just enjoy life. Alright, I'll talk to you later. Bye.